This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this exploding text effect using GIMP. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So in order to follow along with this tutorial you'll need a particular brush that I created and um, I'll have it linked in the description. So just go ahead and download that brush and install it into GIMP before you get started. And if you don't know how to install brushes into GIMP, it's pretty simple. Just uh, do a quick search for it. You just, you just have to place it in a specific folder. So um, to get started, we're gonna start with this, uh, this texture image right here. That will also be linked in the description. I'm just gonna open that up with GIMP. And here we have our texture image. We're going to come over here to the layers menu and click the button over here that says create a new layer. And um, the layer name, we'll just call this effect. Uh, we'll use a foreground color and go ahead and click OK. And it should be black. If it's not black, just grab the bucket fill tool and fill it in with, with the color black. And what we want to do with that layer is right click that and go to add layer mask. And uh, we want to choose white full opacity and click add. And what we'll do now is we'll create some text. So um, the font I'm using for this is called Orbitron, but any Sans font should work fine with this. I'll, I'll, I'll link the Orbitron font in the description of the video in case you'd like to use that particular font. But anything, anything should really work well with this. Anything that's just not like a cursive font so, uh, should work pretty well. So um, I'm going to grab the text tool, which is over here. And again, the font I'm using is Orbitron. I'm going to have the size of this 118. Um, I'll change the color. I'm going to change the color to white. And I'm just going to click on the canvas and I'm going to, in all caps, just write explode like that. And what I'll do is I'll go to the alignment tool and click on that text object and I'm going to center it relative to the image on the um, uh, vertical and horizontal axis like that. And what I'll do now is I'll right click on that layer where it says explode and I'll go to alpha to selection. And then I'll delete that layer. So that's gone. So what we want to do now is let's click on this uh, this white this white uh, layer mask right here. And we'll go to the bucket fill tool. And we'll switch over to the color black. And we're going to click uh, somewhere within. We're going to click within that selected area to fill that in with white, which is actually going to take the, um, the texture beneath it. It's going to fill it in with the texture beneath it like that. And what we could do now is go to select none. So that now, now we have that. So what we have to do now is we're going to grab the acrylic brush which is down here. It's like right beneath the star. This one right here. Acrylic 04. And um, we're going to make this white. And we're going to grab uh, the paintbrush tool which is over here. I'm actually going to make this a little smaller. The size, a little too small. A little too big actually. I'm just going to shrink that down. We want this to be That's a pretty good size right there. And I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm just going to go along the top edge and softly brush out the top of uh, each letter like that. So it looks like it has like this worn down looking sort of effect. Let's go ahead and just brush this all out like that. And I'm to move the page around, I'm pressing down on the mouse wheel and just moving the mouse, just like we do in Inkscape. So um, that's how that's done. I'm just going to finish uh, touching up this uh, these edges over here. Brush those edges out a little bit. Come over here and get the bottom, like that. And it's okay if it's not like even. It doesn't. It's actually better if it's not even. Like you could have some areas where it goes up higher than the other. The the uh, the, the key here is just to make it look natural. You know, you don't want to look. You don't want it to look too symmetrical and perfect. Otherwise, it's not gonna. Uh, it's not gonna be a believable look. Go ahead, that. I'll touch up those edges, maybe like that. Now let me press one to zoom back. See how that looks. All right, that's a pretty good start. So what we want to do now is go over here to this brush, which is uh, this one right here cells 01 and we want to zoom back in again holding control and rolling up on the mouse wheel let me shrink this brush down a little bit maybe about that size and go ahead and just click like that on certain particular areas 
to make it look like it almost looks like it puts cracks in the letter like that, which is uh, it, it's good. It helps sec, it helps uh, sell the uh, the exploding effect a little more. And I'm just gonna you don't want to put it everywhere, otherwise you're not gonna be able to read the text. So I'm just gonna pick key areas and put it in there like that. That's pretty good. Something like that. Take this one, put that up there. This one down here, like that. Put this one over here, maybe one over here, and then down here. Let me zoom back out. Pressing one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Actually, no, that doesn't. And that's, um, maybe I put one right there. Yeah, that's good. That looks pretty good as it is right now. So what we wanna do now is, um, we wanna come down here and choose another brush which is the, uh, it's Splats 02, this one over here, Splats 02. And we want to switch the color over to black. And let me zoom back in. And it's going to go ahead and click like that to create like little fragmentation pieces like that. Well, that's a little too much. And this, with this, you got to be a little careful. You don't want to go overboard or else it's going to look like too, um, it's not going to look very believable. Like that right there, that's a good amount of um, fragments right there. Do this over here, down there, like that. That's pretty good. And this kind of gives the look like it's uh, like the pieces are breaking off and flying away off of the text. Let me do this down there. Let me zoom back out and look. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let me zoom back in. Like that, that's pretty good. Down here, go over there. Up there, like that. And again, you don't want to go too overboard with this or it's just not going to look believable. So just a slight amount like that. That looks pretty good. So what we've done, what we want to do now is let's right click on this layer and go to apply layer mask. So we're done with that. And what we're going to do now is right click on that layer and go to add layer mask because we're going to put a new, a new layer mask on there. White full opacity. Go ahead and click add. And... Uh, Let's come back up down here to our brushes. The brush we're gonna choose is uh, Confetti 2, the one I had you install. Um, let's zoom in. I'm gonna make this brush a little bigger. I'm just holding up on, I'm just holding one of the bracket keys to make it bigger, or you can just make it bigger over here. I'm gonna make this about this big. We want it to be a little bit bigger than the text like that. And go ahead and click once like that to put that there. Come over here. One more time, and over here, one more time right there. Let me press one to zoom back out. And um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So what we wanna do now is go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and we wanna choose um, Zoom, and the length, we want this one to be five. And go ahead and click OK, and let it load and do its thing. And that creates kind of like a motion blur type of effect, like the uh, pieces are flying away from the text. So, um, okay, that's done. What we could do with that now is we can right click on that and go to apply layer mask, because that's finalized, and we can go ahead, right click, and apply another layer mask. Apply layer mask, click add. And for this one, we're gonna make the brush even bigger just holding up on the bracket key. We're gonna make this like almost like three times the height of the text. Maybe, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Right there, click once and come over here. Click again. That looks pretty good. And what we'll do with that layer is we'll go to filters, blur, motion blur. We'll do the same thing. But for this one, instead of five, we're gonna do 20. Go ahead and click OK. Give it a few seconds to load and do its thing. And you'll see we have the motion blur effect looking like the fragments are flying away from each other. But the problem is we can see, we can see too many details of the texture beneath it. You notice the texture beneath it? You can see too many of the details within that. It doesn't very look realistic. So what we're gonna do, if you notice what I did here in the thumbnail, I have that blurred as well. So what we're gonna do uh, we're going to right click on the texture layer and actually no, don't right click it, just left click it like that and then come down here to duplicate, create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then we're going to right click that duplicated layer 
and go to uh, add layer mask. Actually, no, we're not going to do that yet. We'll go to filters, blur, and motion blur. And we're going to give that the same blur, 20, zoom like that, blur, uh, blur outward. Go ahead and click OK. And that, that looks good for the fragments going on the outside because it matches the blur of those fragments. But on the inside, it kind of uh, doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that layer. Now we're going to add a layer mask. Uh, white full opacity, go ahead and click add. And we're going to grab um, the paintbrush and we're going to choose this brush down here. And let me shrink that down. And we're just going to color in the text to put that uh, to put that original um, put that original texture back in there, like that. And that's pretty good. That should pretty much do it. I think uh, I think that pretty much does it for this tutorial. We have created our exploding text effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching. This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use GIMP to create this image of a, uh, I guess you can call this a fish tank inside of a light bulb. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen and see which mouse clicks and key strokes you're using. Yeah. I'll minimize this and we'll get started here in GIMP. Uh, the first thing we want to do is open up the image of the light bulb. I will have a link to that in the description of the video. So